Bonjour, welcome to French One. I'm Madame Rumley. This is class for Wednesday or Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, week 29, April 26th or 27th. And this is our final lesson and also the final part of Le Passé Composé or the past tense. <clears throat> Just a little encouragement to finish strong. This is um, the last bit and then we'll be done with the school year. Woohoo! Le programme pour aujourd'hui est prière. Écriture, révision, leçon 24, à qui a de la chance, projet et devoir. Let's begin with some prayer. Father, you know exactly what's been going on, all the, the tech problems, the sickness in my family, the, the reasons why um, we have missed uh, a, a few classes, this live classes this semester. And I just ask that you would... Um, Give each student grace that these lessons would be enough. The review lesson at the end of the year would be enough um, that they would still really benefit and learn French well. Um, bless all the the closing out of this class. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> all right, let's do some révision des écritures. Review the scripture verses. And then I added at the end, because as you know, we're going through the... Um, the Lord's Prayer, I added at the end that little part that's not in Scripture, for that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, but it's the tradition. They'd say it in French as well. So if it was a live class, I'd have you do this one. This is Matthew, Matthieu 6, um, 12. Pardonne-nous nos offenses, comme nous aussi pardonnons. À ceux qui nous ont enfoncé. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Pardonne-nous nos offenses comme nous aussi pardonnons à ceux qui nous ont enfoncé. So we have a lot of liaisons happening here. Um... Comme, pardon nous, nos offenses, comme nous aussi pardonnons à ceux qui nous ont enfoncés. Okay, lots of liaisons there. Next, Matthieu 6, 13, ne nous enduis pas en tentation, mais délivre-nous du malin. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Ne nous enduis pas sans tentation, mais délivre-nous du malin. And then finally, the end, la fin de notre Père, of our Father, um, the Lord's Prayer. Car c'est à toi... Qu'appartiennent qu le règne, la puissance et la gloire au siècle des siècles. Amen. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Woohoo! So now you know all the Lord's Prayer. And I encourage you, despite not having oral tests with me, um, to to memorize it, to see if you can figure out, you can memorize the whole thing. It would be really beneficial for you. Okay, so let's go through this slowly. Car, for, say it, um, à toi, it's a you, um, it's a, to you, who, a, um, <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry if there was an awkward pause. I had to pause there for a, um, there's a spider. Okay, sorry. Anyways, car c'est à toi for it's, um, like, of you or to you who, uh, this is kind of like apportioned or belongs the reign, like the kingdom, the power, la puissance power, and the glory and the glory. Um, to the centuries upon centuries. 
And this is the way we pronounce this because there's the accent here on the E. You actually, there's, you, you say the I and the E kind of separately. So it's siècle, siècle. Car c'est à toi, car par chienne, le règne, la puissance et la gloire au siècle des siècles. Amen. <coughs> Alright, so that's la fin de notre père. Let's move on to lesson 24. Qui a de la chance? We're going to start with the dialogue, which is kind of a longer one on page 340. Qui a de la chance? Who has good luck? Or the luck? So first we have a vendredi après-midi. Anne et Valérie parlent de leur projet pour le week-end. Qu'est-ce que tu vas faire samedi soir? Je vais aller au cinéma avec Jean-Pierre. Tu as de la chance. Moi, je dois rester à la maison. Mais pourquoi? Les amis de mes parents viennent chez nous ce week-end. Mon père insiste pour que je reste pour le dîner. Quelle barbe! C'est vrai, tu n'as pas de chance. Try to, again, remember, try to follow along just um, listening if you can, and but of course look if you need to, because they always introduce new things in the dialogue. Lundi matin. So that was vendredi après-midi. Now it's lundi matin. Anne et Valérie parlent de leur week-end. <coughs> Alors, tu as passé un bon week-end? Oh non, pas très bon. Mais tu es sorti avec Jean-Pierre. C'est vrai. Je suis allé au cinéma avec lui. Ne nous vous un très, très mauvais film. Après le film, j'ai eu une dispute avec Jean-Pierre. Et, tant plus, j'ai perdu mon porte-monnaie et je suis rentrée chez moi à pied. Et toi, tu es resté chez toi? Non. Comment? Les... Oh, my... the spider's back. Oh, my gosh. <coughs> Sorry about that. The spider went running straight for me. Okay. Um, a huge one. Anyways, where were we? Um, comment les parents de tes parents ne sont pas venus? Si, si, ils sont venus avec leur fils. Et alors? Eh bien, c'est un garçon très sympa et très amusant. Après le dîner, nous sommes allés au Zénith. Nous avons assisté à un concert de rock absolument extraordinaire. Après, nous sommes allés dans un café et nous avons fait des projets pour le week-end prochain. Qu'est-ce que vous allez faire? Nous allons faire une promenade à la campagne dans la nouvelle voiture de sport de Thomas. C'est le nom de mon nouveau copain. Toi, vraiment, tu as... De la chance. <coughs> All right, let's do the compréhension. Numéro 1. Qu'est-ce que Valérie va, sam va faire samedi soir? Qu'est-ce que Valérie va faire samedi soir? What is Valérie going to do Saturday evening? She's, what is she going to do according to the Friday night? Um, and the answer is, Valérie, she's going to go to the movie theater with Jean-Pierre, her boyfriend. <coughs> Numéro 2. Pourquoi est-ce que Anne doit rester à la maison? Pourquoi est-ce que Anne doit rester à la maison? Why does Anne, why is um, Anne must stay at her house? So she complains, she says, oh, my parents... Friends of my parents are coming this weekend, and my dad's insisting that I stay for the dinner. <clears throat> so she has to stay for a family dinner. Numéro 3. Est-ce que Valérie a aimé le film? 
Est-ce que Valérie a aimé le film? Notice here we have the passé composé. So before we were talking about these two are in the near future. Um, because we're talking about Friday night, what their plans are for Saturday. And then here, now we're talking about the part that's on Monday when they're looking back at the past. Did Valerie like the film? A aimé. And the answer is non. Non. She did not like the film. Nous avons vu un très, très mauvais film. We watched a very, very bad movie. Numéro 4. Qu'est-ce qu'elle a perdu? Qu'est-ce qu'elle a perdu? What did she lose? J'ai peur, et étant plus, j'ai perdu mon porte-monnaie. And on top of that, I lost my wallet. So the answer, she lost her wallet. Numéro 5. Comment est-ce qu'elle rentrait chez elle? Comment est-ce qu'elle est rentrée chez elle. How does she, and then est rentrée, we'll, we'll teach you why it's, this lesson will teach you why it's that way, um, had returned to her house. How did she return to her house? Comment means how, and she had to return her house. Je suis rentrée chez moi à pied. So the answer is à pied. She had to return to her house by foot. Number six. Où est où est avec qui est-ce qu'Anne a dîné? Où est avec qui est-ce qu'Anne a dîné? Where and with whom did Anne dine? And the answer is with her parents' friends and their son. Um, uh, so she, she, her, Valerie asks, um, les amis de, oh, she said, okay, did you say at your, and she asks, blah, blah, blah. Valerie asks if, um, Anne stays at her house and she says, no, didn't your parents and their friends come? And she says, yes, yes. The parent, my fr parents' friends came with their son, avec leur fils. And then she ended up going out with the son. <clears throat> so the answer to, to this one is, where and with whom did Anne dine? It was at her house with her parents' friends and their son. Numéro 7. Où est-ce qu'elle est allée après le dîner? Où est-ce qu'elle est allée après le dîner? Where did she go after dinner? Après le dîner, nous sommes allés au Zenith. So after dinner, she and the son went to, whose name's Thomas. Um, they went to Zenith, which is like a, a big um, concert hall. And they watched a concert. Qu'est-ce qu'elle va faire le week-end prochain? Qu'est-ce qu'elle va faire le week-end prochain? So notice here our verb is now in the near future. Qu'est-ce qu'elle va faire le week-end prochain? What is she going to do next weekend? And the answer is, her and Thomas have plans to go in, um, it says faire une promenade. Okay, sounds like going for a walk. À la campagne in the countryside, but it's dans la nouvelle voiture de sport. So they're going for a drive in the countryside in Thomas's new sports car. Comment s'appelle son nouveau copain? What is the name of her new boyfriend? And it's Thomas. So that's the dialogue. Um, hopefully at this point, it's despite the new vocabulary and grammar that you haven't learned yet, it's um, easier to understand and starts feeling more fluid, despite all the, the hiccups of this semester. <laughs> all right, let's do some grammar. Let's learn some of those things that we just read about. <clears throat> Actually, before I even start, we've been learning about le passé composé. Let me type. Okay, I know in all the, I've done this a handful of times in our past lectures. Why? Oh, here we go. 
give me a second. We're going to make the font a little bigger. Le passé. My computer's going very slow. There we go. Composé. Le passé composé is made up of two parts, as you know. Part one is um, aller. <clears throat> I mean, avoir, of course. Avoir. Hello. Typing tool. Avoir, okay, conjugated in the present tense. And then the second part is the past participle, which as we learned, and I won't go through all of this, this again because I did it quite thoroughly in the last lesson, but as you recall, the um, past participle is the same for um, each verb. It, the thing that changes in the passé composé is the conjugation of avoir in the present tense. Now, what I'm about to teach you is that there are some verbs, some verbs, some weirdo verbs, irregular ones, that instead of avoir, use être. It's still the passé composé, but for some reason, they actually use être here instead of avoir. So let's look at it. <clears throat> Some verbs are conjugated in the passé composé using être instead of avoir. Okay? So we have être conjugated in the present tense, and then the past participle is the same. Let's look at an example. The verb aller um, is one of those weirdo verbs that uses être. Now, you just, when do you know when to use être and when to use avoir? And the answer is, you just simply have to memorize which ones. If they're irregular. So the past participle for the passé composé using être agrees with the number and gender of the person doing the action. So, uh, let's go back to this chart here. So the regular, the regular guys, the passé composé regular, how about I do it like this? Regular uses avoir and the past participle is left as the same. Okay, le passé composé, irregular, uses être instead of avoir, conjugated in the present tense. And then it also has the past participle, but in this case, because it's irregular, um, it actually shows gender and number. In this case, the for the regular one, where are you? There we go. Okay, it um, for the regular passé composé, it remains the same every time. For example, um, j'ai mangé. Tu mangé, nous mangé. Okay, but for the irregular passé composé, okay, um, it actually that past participle actually kind of changes. So if if I'm if je in this case is what. Let's say je is me, so I'm a, I'm féminin, okay? Um, so then the sentence would be je suis, let's do that verb aller. Now I add an E because I'm feminine. Let's say je is a masculine person. He would, he would say je suis aller. <clears throat> Uh, they sound the exact same, aller and aller, but they, they are spelled differently. Now let's do nous. Um, <clears throat> let's say nous is a group of males and females. Then it would be nous sommes aller. We add just an S. 
let's say nu is a group of just males. It would also be nu sum ale. Same. Let's say nu is a group of just females. Then it would be nu sum ale with an extra e and the s. Does that make sense? So the regular passé composé uses avoir conjugated in the present tense and past participle, which, as you know, remains the same every single time. Manger, manger, manger looks the same every single time you use it. Oh, I forgot the... I was so focused on the past participle. I forgot the, the avoir here. Tu as mangé, nous avons mangé. Okay? <clears throat> the passé composé in the irregular uses être, conjugated in the present tense, and the past participle actually does change, and it shows the gender and the number of the subject. So if your subject is feminine and singular, you add an E. If it's masculine and singular, you do not add an E. If it's um, plural, you add an S. If it's feminine and plural, then you add an ES. So it seems kind of kind of complicated, but it's also... We've seen this kind of thing a lot this year, so it shouldn't be like too strange. <clears throat> so here's the whole chart for le passé composé of aller, which means to go, so the past tense would be went. Okay? Je suis allé, tu es allé, tu es allé, ils, elles ont été allé, nous sommes allé, vous êtes allé, ils, elles sont allé. So you kind of do the same thing for the base. Um, it's allé is an er verb, even though it's irregular. You remove the er and you add an e with an accent aigu. And then if a girl is talking, then you add an e. If there's more than one girl talking, then you add an e and an s. If it's just more than one, but they're all males, then you add just an s. Let's do this exercise. Using allé in the passé composé. I went to the movies. Okay. Je suis, actually I can make this even bigger. Je suis allé. Okay, I'm a girl, so I'm going to add an E. If you're a boy, you would do just like this. Just plain like that. Je suis allé, and then to the movies. Au cinéma. Okay. You, plural all boys, went to the store. Plural you is vous, and it's all masculine, so I'd say um, vous êtes allez. Okay, so that's the base. There's It's all boys, so I'm just going to add just an S because it's plural and masculine. Um, au magasin. Like one more time. The passé composé. Um, the irregular version uses être conjugated in present tense. And the second part is the past participle. Um, that, um, take, that changes gender and number. Okay, or shows the gender number of the subject. Okay, next, you, plural, you, but this time all girls, went to the countryside. So, vous, and then um, I want to say went. Okay, so that's, I use être, conjugated in the present tense. And they went, so there's the base. Now, they're all girls, so I add an X or E, and there's more than one of them, so I add an S. Okay, to the countryside. Um, au campagne. Okay, we went to town. I didn't specify, but let's say we is um, a, a group of boys and girls. Let's say that. So it'd be nous uh, sommes. Okay, there's that conjugation of être in the present tense. 
went, aller. Okay, now it's a mixed group, so we just simply add an S. If I added an ES, that would be all girls. Just an S tells us it's either all boys or a mixed group. Um, Oviel. Okay, and then finally, they, boys and girls, went to school. Il, okay, because it's, it's a mixed group. Um, and then the conjugation of être in the present tense. Ils sont allés, just an S, um, à l'école. Oops. Okay. So we, we do the present tense of être. We find the past participle. And then, and then we add things to the past participle to represent the subject, the subject's gender and number. Feminine, singular, masculine, singular, plural, and so forth. Okay, now let's do this exercise from the textbook, page 343. I can move this now that we don't need to hide the answers. All right. We're doing à Paris, I believe. Yes. <clears throat> um, des amis sont allés à Paris samedi dernier. Friends went to Paris last Saturday. Chacun est allé à un endroit différent. Each went, went, est allé, went, to a place different, to a different place. D qui est allé aux endroits suivants. Say who went, est allé, went, aux endroits to the places, the following places. Complétez chaque phrase avec le sujet approprié et la forme correspondante du verbe être. Complete each phrase with the appropriate subject and the corresponding forms of the verb être. Okay, so um, you can pick you can actually pick which subject you want, doesn't matter which one, but make sure with each one that your, um, or it actually doesn't matter, I just realized that they did it for you. Okay, so look, what you have to do is you have to look at the past participle here, and it'll tell you whether it's one girl, which would be Claire, one boy, which would be Olivier, um, just boys would be Eric and Jacques, and then all girls would be Anne and Monique, okay? So I'll write those at the top. Our choices are Olivier, who's just a, that's just, that's masculine and singular. Claire is feminine and singular. Uh, what were the other ones? Uh, Eric and Jacques. Eric and Jacques. That would be masculine and plural. And then finally, we have Anne and Monique. that would be the feminine plural. Okay, so those are your choices. And you would have to look at the past participle to decide which subject went to that place. So number one, we have alde, which it, with just an E on the end, which tells us that it's singular and just a girl. So I would say Claire est allé à la tour de Eiffel. She went. So they give you like the second half of the past participle. You need to look at the past participle and decide which subject and give us the first half of the passé composé, which would be A here. Aller here au centre Pompidou. We see just, there's nothing added on, neither E nor S. So that tells us that it's Olivier, masculine and singular. Olivier est allé. Okay, the two parts of passé composé. Est allé, est allé. I should probably do this closer, actually. That'd probably look better. Okay, next one. Alle has just an S, which tells us that it's masculine or mixed and plural. Okay, it's a it's plural, and it's a group of just boys or boys and girls. So our choice here would be Eric et Jacques sont allés. Sont allés.
Okay. Make sure so you have to make sure you do the correct form of the et, the verb être. Next, we have a plural form here with because we have the s, but there's also an e which tells us that it's all girls, so it has to be Anne et Monique. Sont allés au Galerie Lafayette. Sont allés. Next, we have aller. Oops, I accidentally made that box really tiny. And there is there's nothing added on, so that tells us that it's masculine and that it's singular. So our choice is Olivier, and then our first half of the passé composé. Olivier et allé. Next, we have an S, tells us it's plural. There's no E, so it's not all girls. It's a group of either all boys or a mixed group. Our choices here would be Eric et Jacques sont allés. Sont allés. Next, we have aller with just nothing added on. So that's again Olivier, masculine singular. Olivier est allé. And then finally, we have aller with the S tells us that it's plural. The E tells us that it's all girls. So it's Anne et Monique sont allés. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, so I we just have been practicing the this form of the passé composé using être with just the verb aller, but here are other verbs that also use être. So we have aller, which this is the base form, and then and then we can add either an s or an e. Arriver, here's the base form. Thankfully, it does it follows very much the same. No, it does, it does follow the same kind of trend for the, how to create the base for the um, past participle. If it's an ER verb, you remove the ER and add an E with an accent aigu. If it's an IR verb, um, actually, that's different. You would use a U here instead of an I. But anyways, it's pretty it's pretty predictable mostly for, for figuring out how to do the base. Okay, then you can add an E if it's feminine and an S if it's plural. Arrivé. Uh, to arrive, rentrer, to return, rester, to stay, and venir, uh, venu. Okay? So you just have to remember that these verbs use être. Some people say things like some of the action verbs are the ones that use être. Like these are all kind of action y. Um, but I, it's there's so many exceptions to that to that kind of idea that I am wary of giving you that kind of standard. All right, let's do some more exercises. We boys and girls went to town. Nu went to town. So this time, um, let's aller, and we want to use some conjugation of être in the present, aller, because that's our base. Now, our subject new is boys and girls, so it's mixed, and it's plural, so we add just an S. Oville. Next, you, plural, boys and girls, arrived at noon. Vous et, okay, uh, être conjugated in the present tense. Now we have the verb arrived this time, which we saw on the last page. The base looks like this, arrivé. Uh, now it's a mixed group and it's plural, so we add just an S. À midi, at noon. You, formal, masculine, singular, arrived at noon. Vous, et, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's still et. Vous, et, um, 
arrived. Arrivé, that's the base. Now it's masculine, so I'm going to leave it. And because it's just singular, I'm using it in the formal sense instead of the plural sense, I'm not going to put an S. Amidi. So I put those next to each other so you could kind of see the difference there. So if you're reading these sentences, and this one we know we're talking about more than one boy and girl, um, more than a group of people, either all boys or um, boys and girls, because there's an S on the arrivé there. This one has no S on the end, so we know we're using vu here in the formal sense instead of the plural sense. <clears throat> Number four, we, oops, knew, every time, knew, returned, okay, some rentré, okay, we learned that's the base for rentré, and they're all girls, so we're going to add an extra E, and there's more than one of them, so we add an S, uh, to the house, à la maison, At 11. Um, uh, à la maison. À 11 heures. And you can add du soir ou du matin, or whatever you want. Okay, the tourists, which are boys and girls, stayed at the Hotel Ibis. Uh, les touristes Tourist. Um, so uh, that would be if it, if we or you could do yil if you want. That's fine too because it's a group. Um, son stayed resté. So we know that's the base. It's a group of mixed people, not just all girls. So we add just an s. So we say o a l'hôtel. Must take so long to do the accents, huh? Uh, Ibis. All right. And then number six, who came yesterday? Qui? And then, um, as if you remember from when we did the, the when we learned about questions, qui, um, who, and any of these kind of question words function as if they're il, elle, or on in terms of how you conjugate the verb. So it'd be qui a and then came is arrivé. Okay, that's the base. Now we don't know whether it's masculine, feminine, singular, plural, so we're just going to leave it in the masculine singular form. Okay. Sorry, not arrive. Venu. <laughs> Wrong verb. Not who arrived yesterday, who came yesterday. Venu. <clears throat> so we're going to leave it in the blank, in the kind of like the most basic form because we don't know who, uh, whether who is masculine, feminine, or singular or plural. Okay. We're going to move on to more grammar things. <clears throat> um, oops. Th this one. Grammar thing. <clears throat> As you know, when we want to say something in the negative, okay, we use ne and then pa. Our subject comes first, something like je and then ne and then ne and pa is the negative sandwich, the bread of the sandwich. The meat of the sandwich is our verb. Ne parle pa. And then whatever we want to add at the end stays at the end. Espanol. Okay, I don't speak Spanish. Now, as you've seen in our in our verses, there are actually some um, you can kind of spice it up. Like this is just simply do not ne pa. But you can actually change the pa sometimes to different things um, <clears throat> to make it. You'll see. You'll see why. So, for example, one of the most common is to change it to jamais. Instead of having it be ne pas, it's ne jamais, which means never. It's not just like ne pas means like just a simple not, but ne 
jamais, it means like never. So if I want to say not just I don't speak Spanish, I'll, I never speak Spanish. <laughs> like I'm really trying to emphasize it. Je ne parle jamais espagnol. Not that I have anything against Spanish. That was just the example that came to mind. So to express the negative with never, the pa in the negative sandwich is replaced with jamais. So we have our subject, the ne, the verb, and then jamais. <clears throat> So it functions the exact same. It's just like having a different piece of bread in our sandwich. Um, I never go to the opera. Nu, ne, um, nu ne venons jamais à l'opéra. I've never visited Quebec. Nu ne visit Ton jamais Quebec. Je, I, I've never been to Geneva. Um, je ne viens jamais à Genève. Okay? So it's like, it's just like, it's the exact same thing as pot, except you, um, Oh, I said, okay, not go, but I said go here, but it's been. <clears throat> same idea. <clears throat> so it's the exact same thing as the ne pas sandwich, except instead of the pas, we have a jamais to express a stronger negative, um, a never instead of a simple not. So we could do like a little exercise here. Okay. Allez, Sheen. Oh, okay. I, 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 let me read the directions here. Et toi? Dites si vous avez jamais fait les choses suivantes. Uh, to say whether you have done the following things. Um, ever done the following things. I'm going to just pretend I've done none of these, even though I've visited France and I've been in a limousine or whatever. But uh, we're just going to practice using the, um, the jamais. Okay. Je um, ne vais jamais en Chine. Okay, I've never been to China. Visit Paris. I have visited Paris, but I'm just going to pretend for the sake of practice that I've never done it. Je ne visite jamais Paris. If you notice, I, I, we're back to using the present tense because we're we just want to focus right now on the um, the jamais part. We don't need to focus on the verbs. We don't want to think about too many things at once for this new lesson. Uh, voyage en limousine. I have driven in a limousine, but we'll just pretend I haven't. Je ne voyage jamais en limousine. Voir un opéra. I wish I've seen an opera. It's like on my bucket list. Je ne vu jamais an opéra. I mean, wow. <laughs> uh, lol. Okay. Je ne vois jamais an opéra. Okay, and then telephone au président. I've never telephoned to the president. I would, if you have, I would love to hear the story. <laughs> Je ne téléphone jamais au président. So as you see, it's actually quite an easy lesson. The point is, it's just replace the pas with a jamais to express never instead of a simple um, not. All right, next lesson. Um, Quelqu'un quelque chose. Quelqu'un means someone. Quelque chose means something. So, um, pay close attention. This part is a little tricky. So, quelqu'un means someone or somebody. It means anyone or anybody. We have kind of a lot of words to express it. In French, they just have one to express this idea. Quelque chose, something. So this is referring to a person. This is referring to something. Chose means thing, we've learned. 
something or anything, okay? Again, more English words than there for the French equivalent, okay? So that's the expression. Now, when we want to say that, um, uh, put this into the negative, that I don't have some, that there's no one, that there's not anyone, that there's nobody or not anybody, quelqu'un, the negative essentially, I use my negative sandwich, ne, and then personne instead of pas or instead of jamais. If I want to say that I don't have, instead of having something or anything, I have nothing or not anything, the negative of quelque chose, my negative sandwich looks like ne and rien instead of the pas or jamais. So let's look at some examples. Um, this is just basically more things for you to add to your list of possible negative sandwiches. Okay, so we have our regular ne pas, which means just do not. We have ne jamais, which means never. We've looked at a few others with the, script, with the scripture verses, but don't worry about those right now. And now I'm, I'm teaching you ne personne, which means nobody, not, not anybody, uh, those lines. And then ne rien means nothing or not anything, that kind of idea. Okay, so let's look at some sandwiches or some sentences here. <laughs> sandwiches. Uh, tu attends quelqu'un? Are you waiting for someone? So this is like an example of when we would use these words, um, like someone, quelqu'un, and then in the negative, it'd be like, no, I'm not if you, waiting for someone. I'm not waiting for anyone. You say, non, je n'attends personne. So this part's tricky because we don't really talk like this in English. We um, we would say, we'd put quelqu'un in the negative. In French, we use this instead. Like I'm waiting for no one, for personne, for no one. Vous faites quelque chose ce soir? Are you doing something tonight? Non, je ne faisons rien. No, I am, this is to do, not doing nothing, and not doing nothing. Not doing a thing, essentially. Qui est là? Who is there? And then you can answer also just um, personne, like nobody. Qu'est-ce que tu fais? What are you doing? Rien. Nothing. Just just the simple personne et rien. Okay? So one more time. If you want to express someone, somebody, anyone, anything, uh, anybody, Okay, in the negative, like I'm not waiting for anybody, we use this negative sandwich, ne personne. So if I'm waiting for, I'm not waiting for any person, it would be, je n'attends personne. If you want to say something or anything in the negative, we'd say, ne rien. I'm not doing anything tonight. Je ne faisons rien. And then you can also just say personne and rien as a short answer for no one. Or nothing. Let's do an, an exercise. Invite quelqu'un. Oh, let's, sorry. I forgot to read the directions again. 347. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Florence est malade. Florence is sick. Aujourd'hui, today. Elle répond négativement aux questions de Paul. She responds negatively to the following questions that Paul asks. So our example is, tu dînes avec quelqu'un? Okay, dine. are you going to eat with someone? She says, no, I'm going to eat with no one. Je ne dîne avec personne. Okay, so let's do these exercises. He's asking, uh, I'm going to write both the question and the answer. Tu... Invite quelqu'un. Are you inviting someone? And she'd respond with non, je n'invite personne. I'm inviting no one. 
faire quelque chose ce soir? Are you doing something tonight? Tu fais quelque chose ce soir? I just want to point out really quick, notice that I'm conjugating my verbs to match my subject. Je and tu fais. Okay. Um, and then she would respond with, tu fais quelque chose ce soir. So he's asking, are you doing something tonight? And she would say, no, I'm not doing anything tonight. Je ne fais rien. I'm doing nothing. My verb, by the way, is conjugated to match. But the thing that I'm really paying attention here to here is not anyone. I'm not doing, I'm not inviting anyone. I'm not doing anything. Ne rien. Okay. Manger quelque chose à midi. Tu manges quelque chose à midi? Are you eating something at noon? It's really pushing it. She's sick. Come on. <laughs> Just kidding. Tu manges quelque chose à midi? She was, so she was going to say, no, I'm not going to eat anything at midday, at noon. Non, je ne mange rien à midi. Was autocorrects my ace? Okay. You think my computer would learn by now? Regardez quelque chose à la télé. Tu regardes quelque chose à la télé? Are you going to watch something on the TV? Non, je ne regarde um, rien à la télé. I'm talking about something. I'm not going to watch anything on the TV. Next one, we're talking about people. Attendre quelqu'un ce matin. Are you waiting for someone this morning? Tu attends quelqu'un ce matin. Are you waiting for someone this morning? Non, je n'attends personne ce matin. Okay? <clears throat> so, just so you know, these are the correct long responses. I'm not I'm not going to eat anything. Ne rien. I'm not going to watch anything. Ne rien. I'm not going to wait for any one. Ne personne. Okay, so that's that's how you express that. Now just so you know, in practical conversation, you, you know, we we say things kind of shorter. We don't necessarily give complete sentence responses. In real life, Florence probably would have just said personne or rien, rien, rien or personne as an answer to each of these questions. And that works fine as well. It's obviously not a complete sentence, but it's not wrong. Okay? It's like the difference between saying, are you inviting someone? No, I'm not inviting someone. And are you inviting someone? No one. Okay? Okay. So that's that. And that's it for the lessons today. Um, the projet, which I I don't think we'll end up doing, but is the uh, the Montre et Raconte, the show and tell. You can look at the last um, PowerPoint slide and, uh, sorry, the PowerPoint recording um, for the full directions on this. If you want to do it, I will gladly um, give you some class time or office time or um well, actually, probably not class time. Next class time, I think we're going to review just because we missed two live classes in a row. But um, I, if you want to do this, I really want to see it. So you can record a video of yourself or you can meet me in the – like we can meet in here on a different time and um, have your show and tell. And I would love to see it. Um, this, is pr this is the homework. And then um, pretty much the, the Unit 7 test – is the, after this is the um, all that we have left. Um, I'll talk about it a little bit more next week, and then we will be done with French 1. Um, have a great weekend, you guys, and email me if any of this is um, problematic or confusing, and I would love to help you out.